Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today I want to talk about ham radio. I had this subject on my mind for a while and it has been bugging me that I know absolutely nothing about it. In fact, the moment someone says 20 meters, I am completely lost. So I've decided to give it a go because what better way of learning? When I went online to do some research on licensing and how to get a license, the website I was reading the information on suggested that before you get a license you can get an SDR radio, software defined radio, and play with that. It will allow you to listen to different frequencies without the transmit, so that's what I've gone and done. Short of removing all the noisy packaging, this is what I've got. So it's the software defined radio stick, the antenna with a cable and SMA connector, and that's all. This little piece of gear should allow us to get up and running and receiving some high frequency signals. And here is the product on Banggood website. This is where it came from. It's a USB 2.0 device, R820T2. And what this is in essence is a USB 2.0 TV tuner. But some time ago someone clever discovered that you can reprogram those chips and make them listen to a lot more than they were listening to while in the TV tuner mode so yeah the capability of the RTL chip inside of this which we'll have a look at in the moment is a lot more than what it was used for it had a lot of potential so they've gone and modified the software that runs on the computer and talks to the chip and because those little USB sticks are so inexpensive that made the SDR radio so popular I'm going to post a link in the video description to this exact listing for your convenience and it also does support the channel when you click the link so please make sure to do check it out so we have the stick itself and the antenna with the SMA connector sub miniature version A good length of cable it's not very much maybe a meter and a half and the base I think is magnetic yeah so you can stick it on something and that will stay put as long as it's a ferrous material and it's not a very long antenna so I'm not expecting great things of this but it will get us started I guess let's move on to this so this is where all the magic happens we've got USB and we've got the SMA female connector on this end and what we should do is stick it into our computer which we will do in a moment but first I want to see the RTL chip inside some clips that are holding the whole contraption in place and here we have the circuit board. So the boring side first, as you can see, not much on the back side. And here is the front. And we've got the RTL2832U upside down. Oh dear. Let's put it right way up. This, by the way, claims to have a temperature controlled oscillator and bias T function, which I'll explain in a moment. And I'm not sure what this plus HF means. So let's have a look at the board. This looks to be an LDO, probably 3.3 volt voltage regulator. And here we have a little chips. Those are the data lines coming from USB into the RTL2832 chipset. And this, I'm not sure what that is. I'm guessing it's filtering because this works on very high frequency. So it doesn't interfere with the USB communication. There is some sort of filtering happening here. And here we have a transformer. Not sure what that's doing, but I guess that's what we're getting into this. We've got the RTL chip itself. Uh, here is what that is, ATHYC542. So that's just uh, a two-wire serial EEPROM. And here we have the oscillator. Is that a temperature-controlled oscillator? I'm not sure if there is a heater inside. And here we have the R820T from Rafael Micro. So this is another chip that's doing the business in here. The bias T means that this is this should be able to send a DC up the coax that would power up the LNA low noise amplifier that's usually mounted right at the antenna. This is likely an inductor, not a capacitor. And then the power comes from this boy here, fed up the coax. But over here we've got a capacitor, so the DC would not get fed through to here into the chip. So I'm not sure, this boy here is a little bit dirty. Oh, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, nasty stuff. CY boy. 
this component here is much bigger than the capacitors over here so I think it is an inductor and this could be some power regulator chip here is another LPT mystery device not sure what that is again but all there is to it is as you can see it's not very complicated so there are three windings on this transformer what is this doing I have got no idea let's attach the antenna to the receiver like so and plug it in I went to rtlsdr.com this website here and following the instructions on the website I was able to download some software and the drivers following the instructions here on the quick start guide I was able to quickly get this up and running in terms of the software there's all the links required this was straightforward really everything is on here and if you follow the instructions you should be able to get one of those dongles up and running pretty much in no time choose the dongle that's our R820T and we are receiving maybe let's get the volume down a little bit so we are receiving now and we are hearing a whole bunch of noise so different types of modulation we've got AM that's FM narrow wide FM BFM not sure what uh, the BFM is whenever you've got a different sort of shade or color on the waterfall that would mean that there is something on that frequency let's try to find something exciting here is some signal and it is somewhat strongish but again this antenna is not what it's supposed to be but if you can see here is the main signal and all the harmonics around it I'm not even sure what different bands are and what frequencies to listen to I'm just this is the first time really I'm messing with this here is some oh there it seems to be activity happening here it's a repetitive signal probably some sort of beacon I'm not sure what that is anyone can tell me 204.004.1 now here is a few more things happening so let's try to listen to this We can't really expect great things with this antenna that we've got. I guess the whole point of this experiment is to get into building some of the stuff, making our own antenna. I'll probably set up a dedicated laptop for this, just so it's a little bit easier to access. Here is something interesting. So there is this frequency 153. Point 026 megahertz and there is this funny signal again repetitive about one hertz and next to it there is something sometimes there you go so now there is a transmission happening here must be some sort of digital signal I guess that's all for this video I guess it's a proof of concept that it does actually work and we are able to receive something albeit not very well but that's due to the antenna being what it is it's you know this is what the antenna so in future videos I'm sure I'll get back into this and we'll probably make some better antenna or at least we'll try Thank you very much for sticking around and please make sure to like the video, uh, share it and come back for more. For today that's it. Take care.